Hello. Today I wanted to make a brief interlude uh, between posting the two parts of my interview with World Bank whistleblower Karen Hughes. And I just want to cover some of the things that she discussed in the first part of our interview, which is that bankers are not who you think they are. Now, uh, the reason why this is, as it, for any of you that watched the first part of the interview, you know, is because uh, she, Karen, discussed the fact that bankers have overtaken the media. So now that they run the media, they basically scrub clean any negative news about them as much as possible. And they present a cleansed picture of themselves as contrite for what happened in 2008, that they're reformed now, that you know they're behaving well now but none of that is true because it's just a censored view that they're giving you since they control all the media now one of the first stories I'm, I'm going to cover now most of the people do realize this but they only think oh that the JP Morgan's the city groups the HSBC's the really big banks of the world like Goldman Sachs and whatnot are the ones that are lying in the Royal Bank of Scotland but you know this really cuts across the board it doesn't matter with small community banks with banks that are just native to certain countries with global international banks. Now I'm going to start by playing an interview um, that was secretly recorded between two bankers from Anglo-Irish Bank and this took place with two executives, John Bow, who is the um, head of capital markets and Peter Fitzgerald and basically they were discussing the terms of a 7 billion euro bailout that they are just given by the uh, Central Bank of Ireland and there and in that uh, you can hear uh, John Bow asking if it was a term loan and or Peter Fitzgerald asking if it was a term loan and then uh, John Bow said no it's a, it's a bridge loan so he said you know it's just going to basically bridge our difficulties until we pay back this bailout which comes from Irish taxpayer money and he said which will be never and then they laugh about it and they just joke about it like it's a big joke that they're ripping off the citizens of Ireland and stealing their taxpayer money which the Irish citizens never have been agreed to give to Anglo-Irish Bank to bail them out yet um, you know they're getting taxpayer money and they just joke about it that they're never going to pay this money back and it's just free money for them. So here we go. I'm going to play this for you now. Hello? And John, I feel if it's free. Oh yeah, okay. okay. As my granny used to say, you must be therapeutic. Uh, what does that mean? Can I watch the computer, is it? <laughs> therapeutic. <laughs> therapeutic. I, I, was, I, was just, yeah. I was just ringing you. Yeah, no, I'm uh, I'm Andy Dexter. Well, it means I can walk and land on water. <laughs> <laughs> you can drink, drink. You can drink beer out of both hands. That's the way that's going on. Ah, oh, jeez. Tell me the big stuff. Falling games. Yeah, we're down to the uh, down to the regulator. I tell you, we're down to the regulator yesterday. 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 Yeah, yesterday was fine. Yeah, I got yesterday. Yeah. And um, and we basically, I tell you, we're down to the evening. Again, no, no, you didn't. Uh, basically kind of gave it them between the eyes and they were sort of pointing in different directions. The other was not us, but geez, you want to get on that. That sounds, mm -hmm. and So we went down and we basically in Central, yeah. yeah. And I mean, to cut a long story short, we sort of said, look, um, what we need is 7 billion euros. And, um, and we're going to give you I'm supposed to give you is our loan collateral. So we're not giving the ECB, we're actually giving you yeah. the, the, the loan. So I said, we, we gave them a term sheet and we just put a pronoun facility together. Yeah. And we said, that's, that's what we need. And that kind of sobered up everybody pretty quickly, you know? Yeah. So why do you need that and what's happening? And Jesus, mm, oh, we certainly focused our minds. So I think, uh, um, and it's this seven billion of terms. This is seven, uh, seven billion of which. Yeah. So, so, so it's bridged. It's bridged off. We can pay you back, which is never. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that's in the promo. That's in the term. <laughs> that's right. 
So under under the under the terms that say the payment, we said no. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, just no, not applicable. <laughs> okay. okay. I want to keep that. So anyway, I need to make one There was a bit of that. There was a bit of that. Jeez, that's a lot of dosh. Jesus fucking hell. And, Okay, so that was the audio of the two executives from Anglo-Irish Bank and also I know some of that audio was a little hard to make out so I'll put the transcript, um, some, of, some of the transcript of that conversation below in the information description of this video if you're watching it on YouTube so you can check it out here to see exactly what these clowns were saying when they're joking about stealing taxpayer money. Okay, so now that you are able to listen to that despicable recording where these bankers that often profess guilt and remorse in public are laughing at basically stealing taxpayer money that the taxpayers of Ireland did not even agree to give to them. It was forcibly taken from them, given to Anglo-Irish Bank, and then they just laugh about how they're never going to pay it back. So, um, now let me move on to another interesting story because this is another point I discussed with Karen Hughes is that the bankers also control the police state. So as you know, in October 2011, JP Morgan gave the largest gift to the New York NYPD, New York Police Department ever, a $4.6 million, which the New York Police Commissioner then wrote a letter to JP Morgan CEO Jamie Dimon expressing quote unquote, profound gratitude for that donation. Now that donation, if you think about it, okay, because the uh, cops are not employed by JP Morgan directly, maybe indirectly, but think about that donation as a buy-off because that's exactly what it was. No different than, say, drug lord Pablo Escobar or uh, drug lord El Chapo Guzman paying off the La Policia and Colombia and Mexico to protect them, to kill or beat down anyone that dares defy their drug cartel. It's the same as a banking cartel. That's what they're doing. They're buying off the police officers. Because think about it. This donation happened October 2011. And then all you got to do if you graduated from kindergarten math and could add two plus two together is you can figure out why did the Occupy Wall Street protest die basically after October 2011. It was going strong to the point that JP Morgan and other Wall Street execs bought off the police department and then all the Occupy Wall Street protesters got beat down <laughs> until they submitted and ceased protesting. So it's just a buy off is no different than a drug lord, uh, underworld, criminal boss that pays the police for protection. It's the same thing going on. And that's also a reason that the truth does not filter down to the people. They don't understand about the nefarious criminal activities of global bankers. But what about these other banks in the U.S. and these bailout funds? So uh, you might get a little more outraged if you're unaware of what, what these banks did with the bailout money. But they spent millions of dollars of U.S. taxpayer money that they're giving in the bailouts for home security systems, private chauffeur cars, country club dues, some bought second vacation homes, uh, some banks even use the bailout money to pay for personal financial advisors. Just to give you an example, let me read you some of this stuff. The chief executive Robert P. Kelly of Bank of New York Mellon Corporation, he took some of the bailout money and spent $178,879 for a car and driver. He spent $846,000 in relocation expenses, including help in selling his home in Pittsburgh and purchasing another one in Manhattan. Goldman Sachs took this bailout money, leased cars and drivers as high as over $230,000 per executive. Per executive, that's not overall, per executive. Jamie Dimon, CEO JP Morgan Chase spent $211,182 on a private jet. And that was taken from bank bailout funds. Now, you even have, let me see, I'll get to more. 
there was a bank executive in Missouri. So it, I'm telling you, it's not just these big banks that uh, Matt TV Rolling Stone referred to as the giant vampire squid. It's also smaller banks because Daryl Lane Woods, a bank executive in Missouri, basically took $381,000 of bailout money that his bank received, which was uh, Main Street Bank, I think was the name of the bank in Missouri, and he used it to buy a condominium in Fort Myers, Florida. <laughs> so do you really think that the remorse these bankers are showing on t TV, on public, on these media distribution channels that they own is genuine? You've got to be kidding me. Now granted, Citigroup, who is going to spend $50 million on a new private jet, did back off of buying that jet a after they received a lot of negative attention for spending bailout money on buying a private jet for the corporation. But they did spend, I, I believe they did actually end up spending another $400 million for the rights to name the New York Mets Stadium City Field. So, you know, it's just outrageous how this, um, how basically, you know, the bankers that own all the media are able to paint a picture that is exactly opposite of what is going on. And just to give you a couple more examples of uh, bankers that will constantly lie to your face and try to tell you that they have your best interests at heart. Uh, look at P. Chidambaram, who is the finance minister of India, who just several months ago literally begged people through the media, through newspapers in India, not to buy gold. In fact, to turn in their gold and to buy the Indian stock market instead to support India and to be a good Indian citizen. But yet, after he said that, the Sensex, which is the Indian stock market index, dropped about 2,500 points after he said that. And then gold rose about 18% against the rupee. So does he have your best interest at heart? Of course not. He is a shill for the bankers trying to do just basically spreading the message of the bankers, which is disinformation to everyone. Another person like this, which a lot of people reveres, Warren Buffett. I have no idea why they revere Warren Buffett because he has always denigrated gold, said gold has no intrinsic value, but as we know, he's teaching you the exact opposite of what is true. Fiat currency has no intrinsic value because what gives a note that has a hundred on it or 20 times more worth than the same exact note that has a five on it? Nothing. Because the intrinsic value is exactly the same, just maybe a fraction of a penny of whatever piece of plastic or cotton fiber that, that bank note is. So he's teaching the opposite of what's true. And so is his right man, hand man, Charlie Munga, Munger, I'm sorry, at Berkshire Hathaway, who quote unquote, just said last year, quote unquote, gold is a great thing to sew onto your garments if you're a Jewish family in Vienna in 1939. But civilized people do not buy gold. So of course, Charlie Munger is obviously just another shill for the bankers because these are the same guys that benefit from all the banking fraud. So of course they're not going to tell you the truth of what to do. So maybe this guy, he's the only guy that benefited from Charlie Munger's advice. The shirt I just showed you that he's wearing, he spent over $21,000 to have that shirt made. So, which is made out of pure gold threads. So I guess that man may be the only person that will benefit from banker shield Charlie Munger's advice to sew gold on, onto your garments because in a few years that shirt you can trade it in for forty, sixty, eighty thousand dollars because it's going to be the largest appreciation for a piece of clothes ever owned by anyone in the entire world. So hopefully you understand by now that bankers are not who you think they are. And not only are bankers not who you think they are, but banks themselves aren't the entities you think that they are. And as always, as I say in every single one of my videos, don't just believe what I'm saying, but always do your own research to either confirm what I'm saying is true, or you know, if you find information that um, contradicts what I say, then just let me know in the video comments below. But you know, I'm always told bankers will never tell you to, to go challenge what they're saying because they want you to be dumb enough just to obey what they say is the truth when they're just telling flat out lies. So let me give you an example. 
Um, for example, the FDIC, the Federal Deposit Corp Insurance Corporation in the United States, just voted five to zero to stop insuring all overseas deposits by foreigners in U.S. banks. So the FDIC insures two, up to 250,000 U.S. dollars per account uh, in the United States, but they're not, they voted five to zero to stop that practice of insuring any overseas accounts. Now think about that for foreigners, why, or even actually for expat Americans, as long as it's held over an overseas branch of a U.S. bank. Now, why is that money overseas different than the money inside the United States? Think about that for a second. It's the same company. Why would they stop insuring it unless there is a problem with the liquidity of these banks? Because they know that Americans will riot if, you know, like Citigroup goes under, goes back. Well, they're basically bankrupt about gets, you know, to that point in a little bit. But if they steal the money from Americans like they did in Cyprus, the Americans will probably take guns into the banks and shoot up the banks. But, you know, they feel they can get away with this with foreigners. So that's why they go look this up on the Internet. You don't know about this because it's a fact. So you got to start doing your own research and draw your own conclusions. Now, another fact that's crazy is that, okay, these banks and these shill media, these shill organizations for bankers, um, like Forbes magazine, like the major media, like the Telegraph in the UK, now they've been... Uh, basically promoting this agenda that a lot of the most sound gold and silver mining companies are in trouble because of this paper takedown in prices. It's, it's crazy. The paper raid that was enacted by central bankers and various puppet bullion banks of theirs where they took the price down gold from 1600 I believe it was in April, down to, I believe it was like 1180 1187 somewhere in that area was the low that was hit now they said oh you must write down your assets gold and silver mining companies and gold core followed and basically they wrote down 1.2 billion dollars of the assets because of the drop of price in paper gold and paper silver which is crazy because they're telling these mining corporations that you must write down your assets because the value has fallen but they're asking these companies to mark the their gold and silver assets to the fake spot paper prices that the bankers are creating in the gold and silver market. So they're not even the real, because the physical premiums for a lot of this physical gold, say for Shanghai or in India, are 20 to 30 you know, dollars higher than the spot price. So that's the actual price for gold. So if you're going to mark it down, these mining companies shouldn't be marking it down to the spot price. They should be marking it down to what the actual real price of a one ounce physical, um, or I'm sorry, a one ounce, yeah, one ounce of physical gold, one ounce of physical silver is. They should be marking it down to the fake, bogus, uh, artificially engineered, bank manipulated spot prices of, of you know these um, commodities of these precious metals. So they're marking it down to the spot price. They're not even marking it down to the real physical price, which is, you know, the minimum that these mining companies should do. But on the other hand, look at this hypocrisy because the 10-year uh, treasury yields just jumped up 100 basis points, which basically caused a, a valuation loss. And all these U.S. treasury bonds and all these big banks like Bank of America, that Citigroup, J.P. Morgan, Goldman Sachs, you know, the, the usual suspects in crime you know that the assets they hold up billions of dollars yet they don't mark any of these assets down a penny not even one penny they mark it to some internal fantasy valuation model because they say oh they're not real losses because we haven't sold it yet but yet the inventory that these mining companies are holding physical gold and physical silver that they're not selling them and some companies the smart companies are actually even holding back the inventory right now not selling because they feel the prices are too low and they will rise so the wait to the prices rise to sell into the market they're saying you must write this, this down right away so look at the hypocrisy of these and these banks are saying they're still profitable they're still viable because they're committing fraud greater than enron accounting fraud greater they're not, they're not marking down their assets to market. They're lying about the valuation. These CEOs are a bunch of lying crooks. And when, and again, this is not 
something I'm making up, you can go confirm it for yourself by researching the internet that none of these assets that are dropping precipitously, precipitously in price are being marked down and that's how these banks are declaring profits. If you look at the derivatives, the 1.2 quadrillion of derivatives that these big global banks hold, they're typically held off balance sheet. So again, these are being marked on Enron fraud-like accounting measures where they may be uh, marking a uh, derivative product that they may get 20 cents to the dollar if they sold it down to the open market today, but yet they're valuing them on their books like 90, 95 cents on the dollar and they're basically internal fantasy valuation model. So again, the only thing that makes these banks profitable and allows these banking executives to keep taking millions of dollars of salary of bonuses uh, per year is Enron like accounting fraud because I can guarantee you if you take the time to look at all these big global banks most of the big global US banks are bankrupt today meaning that their liabilities outweigh their assets but they're just holding all their bad liabilities off balance sheet or not marketing into market, marketing into fantasy valuations while they come down on all these gold and silver mining companies to you must mark down, you must write down these assets because the price of fake paper spot gold and silver has come down. So think about how ludicrous that is. So you have to realize that even banks are not what you think they are. Okay, so that wraps up part one of the video series, Why Bankers Are Not Who You Think They Are. Uh, and now I'm gonna make a part two that will cover all the uh, massive, massive accounting fraud that's being undertaken by all global banks today that people are really unaware of. It's actually a lot more egregious than even the Enron accounting fraud. Like, we've come so far in fraud and deceit today that banks can enact a lot more fraud than even Enron did and nobody even is talking about today. That is crazy. I'm going to talk about that in the second part. And I'm also going to talk in part two about why I see criminal bank cartels as the equivalent of criminal drug cartels. And actually not even the equivalent. I, I would actually put uh, some, some, not all, but some drug cartels, some notoriously known drug cartels above the criminal bank syndicates because some of these drug cartels actually provide a lot of social value for society where these banks basically produce zero social value for society. And that's something even former uh, chairman of the Fed Reserve, Paul Walker, said that in the last 25 years, he said he can only think of one thing positive that banks have contributed to society, that's the ATM machine. And he's, that's coming from a former banker. He said, the only positive thing in the last two plus decades banks have done for society is invent the ATM machine. So stay tuned for part two. Please hit the subscribe button below. Um, if you are interested in spreading our message, we need to spread this message to raise awareness. And as always, stay intensely curious. Thanks a lot for watching. Have a great day.